2012 meeting. Um, welcome. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, first thing I would like to do is welcome our new park board member is Steve Hill, who's with us. He's been um, active in the community as well as on the um, Park and Rec Foundation Board. Um, Dan Marinick, he's replaced Dan Marinick, who um, due to some scheduling conflicts had to step down after our November meeting. So um, Steve was um, appointed through the caucus process and went to City Hall and we're so glad to have him. So glad welcome. to be here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, secondly, I'd like to welcome our new general manager of our Deer Path Golf Course, Wick, Rick Walrith, and we're thrilled to have him. And um, we want him to um, step to the podium and tell us a little bit about himself, so everybody at home can put a name to the face, face to the name, and come out and see you. Welcome. Thank you, Robin. I appreciate that. Uh, again, for those of you who may not know or have the chance to meet me, my name is Rick Walrath. I'm a PGA Class A professional, and uh, I am a employee of uh, Kemper Sports, who have been assigned to via the contract with the city as the general manager. Uh, I, my history has been in the uh, Chicagoland area about five years at uh, multiple golf courses, uh, Crystal Lake Country Club and Windstone Golf Club. Uh, most recently, two years served as a general manager at Riverside Golf Club in Menominee, Michigan. Uh, so quite a bit farther north and a little bit shorter golf season. Uh, I've had the opportunity to meet uh, many of the members at Deer Path and many of the residents of the city and everybody's made me feel tremendously welcome. Uh, I really look forward to, well, first off, seeing the snow come so we can really make sure that the winter is here. Uh, and then more importantly, uh, the snow going away and the golf course opening again. Uh, we're real excited about all the opportunities that are gonna happen this spring from uh, new merchandise and uh, new events coming out for the for the golfing public and we're ready just to make Deer Path a, a wonderful fun environment and a great asset for the city and a special thanks to uh, Jeff and Mary for helping me out through the uh, the first few weeks I, I look forward to the spring great thank you welcome, so much Rick. welcome you. welcome glad you're here all right um, next um, approval of a minutes um, we have two sets of minutes to approve, the approval of the no November 8th, 2011 board minutes and approval of the November 30th, 2011 special meeting of the park board. Um, if there's no changes, I'd like to have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. A second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great, the minutes pass, thank you. Um, our first presentation will be um, on the 12 2012 park use policies by um, Manager Joe Mobile. Thank you, Chairman Ford and members of the board. Each year, staff reviews and revises the park use policies and seeks board approval uh, to keep current with all changes and fee adjustments to ensure that all costs are recovered for these types of uses in our parks. This year, it was recommended by the city attorney that these regulations be retitled uh, policies from regulations and that they uh, uh, receive approval from City Council annually. On December 15th, uh, staff took these policies and presented them to the Property and Public Land Committee of City Council for educational purpose to bring them up uh, to, the to understand the policies and uh, received their endorsement at that time to move forward. So a little background, the Parks and Recreation Department currently administer three policies under the title park use policies. The first is the pavilion rental policy, second was the athletic league user fee policy, and the third is the current movable goal safety policy. The pavilion rental policy allows uh, Lake Forest residents or businesses to reserve and rent a pavilion in our park for their personal use, um, as long as it's not in conflict with other city uh, events or activities. These one-time rental allows them to set up their event, but with the understanding that the park is still open for the public use and bathrooms are also there for general park use. Um, so it re reserves them a spot to set up their event under the pavilion, um, but allows others to continue to use the park. Uh, this program is meant for small gatherings or company picnics, any large-scale events or fundraisers um, that take away city resources from daily operations they have to apply for a special event policy permit through City Hall here. So that's, you know, the larger scale events um, are completely handled through City Hall and need City Council approval. Um, 
The second one is the Athletic League user fee policy. And this policy allows Lake Forest-based athletic organizations uh, to rent fields in our parks for use for their league schedules for practices and games. Um, this policy was established by staff as well as the Parks and Recreation Board uh, to offset the increasing maintenance costs with user fees uh, several years ago. Um, these fees were established um, to cover all of the direct costs that we incur uh, with those uses in the parks by the organization. So we are recovering you know, all the costs associated with these, uh, with these uses. Um, in order to ensure that the city resources are being utilized uh, for the benefits of our taxpaying residents, all organizations must be comprised of a minimum of 67% Lake Forest residency. They must have a minimum of four teams in their association and their use cannot be in conflict with existing programs that we currently run. So for them to be able to even request fields, they have to meet those requirements. The uh, third policy under the park use policies is our current movable goal safety policy. And this policy ensures that all of the movable soccer goals in our parks are properly and securely anchored in the ground during all use of the fields, as well as in the off season, they're stored properly in our parks. Um, on August 2nd, 2011, Governor Quinn signed into law um, a law named Zach's Law. And Zach's Law ensures that all movable soccer goals are safely anchored and all organizations using such goals are properly educated on the risks of using these goals. Um, this is now mandated by, by the law that we need to um, you know, follow moving forward. Uh, this new soccer goal safety and education policy requires that each organization that uses our fields and the goals on the fields, whether they're owned by the city or owned by you know, the private organizations, they must sign off that they understand this policy and they have to have every participant sign off that they understand the risks associated with using the goals on the fields, as well as it mandates that we properly label all soccer goals um, regarding the risks of their use. Our current policy, the movable goal safety policy, we have the safety uh, aspects covered because we do currently anchor all of our goals. However, the educational part of it, we <coughs> don't currently have. Um, so we're looking to move in that direction. Um, at this time, the, the majority of our current park use policies are not, needing any, are, are not in need of any revisions. However, in order to be compliant with the new state of Illinois laws, as well as to be consistent with our city special event policy, staff are requesting the following revisions to our current policy. The first, staff is recommending that fees uh, for the pavilion rentals and the athletic uh, league user fees remain the same as they were in fiscal year 2012. Uh, that means we're not going to be increasing or recommending that we increase our fees for those two policies this year. Reason being, at current time we're able to uh, provide the service and recover all of our costs associated with those uses in the park. So there isn't necessarily a need to increase those. As well, um, the only exception to that is within the park and beach rental, pavilion rental policies, we have additional fees, um, including uh, additional grills. So if someone has a party and they need a second grill or they want extra trash cans, the only fee we're asking to increase is raising the additional grill fee from $65 to $85, and that is to make it <coughs> consistent with the special event policy, because that's what it costs in that policy, so we want consistency between the two, so there's just eliminate the confusion. Um, and also we're asking that we remove the additional uh, trash barrels from the policy. Currently 10 trash barrels come at every rental, and over the history of the program, there has been a very minimal request and it's unnecessary to have that, so we're looking to just remove that from the program. Um, and finally, the, we're recommending that we replace our current movable goal safety policy that's been in place and replace it with the state mandated uh, soccer goal safety and education policy. Okay, so we're, we're moving one and implementing the new state mandated policy. So at this time, staff is asking for the Parks and Recreation Board's um, approval of the 2012 park use policies, as well as the 
fiscal year 13 park fees and also to, uh, asking to direct staff to take this to city council for their approval in the near future. Uh, thank you and any questions? Any questions from anybody? Just one, one question. Um, what do these grills look like that they cost so much? Um, they are, are these, big these big ones? Barrel drum grills. They're extremely heavy. Ah. Um, and it takes two to three people to move it with considerable time. I so, see. Okay. Um, they're just charcoal grills that are, are they're called barrel grills. Uh huh. Yeah, okay. so it's not a little gas grill. It's, it's a nice yeah. big, you can cook for a lot of people on it. Okay. I have just a question out of curiosity. Does the new state mandate help us with our liability insurance in any way? With our liability insurance? Mm -hmm. um, it's, the draft of the policy was uh, taken from uh, Paderma, which is Park District Risk Management. Mm -hmm. um, they've drafted this policy for park districts, so we have <coughs> adapted it to the city's needs. As far as helping with insurance premiums and things, that I can't answer. Okay. Just curious. So one suggestion on the uh, operational policy for Waveland, perhaps we should update that to reflect the fact that we got a basketball court there now. Okay, great. And there's a table, two of amenities, and I can't recall if that was reflected, but we ought to broadcast the fact that we got a nice basketball court there. Yeah, and, and Kurt, we are, I mean, we currently have been updating uh, the kind of the amenities, and so we will definitely take a look at that and make great. sure that's there, because it's a great, great new f amenity, and wonderful uh, it is. Mm -hmm. part of that park now All right mm -hmm. any other questions okay can mm -hmm. I get a motion to approve the 2012 park use policies and fiscal year 13 park fees and direct staff to seek City Council approval so moved. second second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed All right. the motion passes Thank thanks you very much. Joe um, next, on the Lakefront Boat Compound Fiscal Year 13 Capital Funding Update, um, which will be presented by Jeff Waite, our Superintendent of Special Facilities. Thank you, Madam President. Board members, um, tonight we come to you with a revision for the FY13 Capital Improvement um, Cost Estimate for the Boat Storage Compound Resurfacing. Uh, back in, uh, excuse me, November, now the board approved a five-year capital improvement plan for the Parks and Recreation Department. Part of that plan was an FY13 project to resurface the boat storage uh, compound. Uh, conceptually, we thought to remove the asphalt that is currently in place and install a concrete surface. The concrete surface would enable us to, um, it has a, lot, a longer life, uh, lifespan, um, it's more durable, it's not going to sink. Uh, with weather um, so that that was the initial thing but it is much more expensive so um, after um, some further discussion some input from um, users and also uh, reviewing the city engineer surface analysis of the asphalt we are recommending going with an asphalt lift um, during the lift um, they grind off uh, the top layer removing any cracks or bumps, and then putting over a new asphalt um, overlay. Um, <clears throat> it's, less, less, excuse me, it's less expensive. Um, it's going to um, extend the service life of the, the concrete surface. It will um, decrease our liability. Um, it's um, a little bit less, um, <coughs> it, it's less expensive, but also some other materials that we thought we could use in there. Um, such as gravel, we thought that that's, this was going to be best you, you know, the surface that, um, for the compound. Um, so we are asking for um, a revision of the $190,000 that we initially put in the FY13 budget for the, the compound um, of concrete and then going with a, a $70,000 asphalt lift. I should uh, point out that the lift is very similar to what the, the uh, tennis courts uh, were done at uh, Waveland Park. Um, let me make sure that that's correct. At West Park. Yeah. At West, uh, West, West Park. Park. Right. Yeah. Correct. Was Sorry. A complete replacement, but. Right. So uh, tonight we're requesting approval uh, to revise the FY13 um, capital improvement plan cost estimate for resurfacing the compound uh, to a total of seventy thousand dollars and revise the FY13 CPI document currently under consideration by City Council. Okay. Any questions from the board? 
Does the 120000 stay with Parks and Rec then? It does, because yes, okay. this was the one item that was coming out of our surplus funds from the operation, so it stays within the Rec okay. Department. Um, and I should mention, too, the um, uh, when Jeff was describing it, we would also put down that. It's, it's like this large matting that goes after he grinds down the surface. They put this matting down that binds the lower level to the upper level like we did at West Park. So it's a very similar process. Uh, give us long durability there. And we also don't have to replace the fencing because it's okay. embedded in the asphalt that's down there now. So okay. I always hear about how, uh, you know, cost effective in the long run concrete is versus asphalt and I'm mindful we're going, <coughs> we're going the other direction here what is the useful life of concrete what would what would really be the break-even analysis if you looked at a depreciation schedule over the lifespan of each you know possible option um, that's a very good question um, I can't let me just back up and just say that with the the um, asphalt lift we're expecting a 15-year um, lifespan or usability currently I believe the, the compound right now is hasn't been done since uh, about 25 years. Um, it was done when the original beach was done. Right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, as far as, um, to be honest with you, I, I, don't, ha I don't know that, that number. Yeah. I know yeah. When, we, when we spoke with the engineering department, part of the thought here is that, you know, this isn't asphalt that's being driven over like you would on a road. It has minimal um, uh, objects being moved in and out of it. It's not all, even all year long with the same level of activity. So that really helps us extend <coughs> beyond what you would have on a normal street or something. But it is similar to what we would have at a tennis court, where there's just light play and that kind of thing. So it's kind of in between there. But um, you know, that was one of the trade-offs that we looked at. But the asphalt we've had there has been functioning very well. You know, the members have been very pleased with it mm -hmm. until the last you know, years where we've started to have these huge compromised areas where they've been sinking and, you know, the issues where they aren't blocking their boats. I think that's been part of the problem, too, is they need to properly, you know, the tongues of their boat and trailers and stuff block those so that they don't have these uh, things, you know, poking into the, the asphalt and compromising it that way. So I think there's a little bit of education that we can do with that. Mm -hmm. Sally can probably back me up on that, that aspect of it. So... Um, and if it gets if it gets uh, sealed every reasonable amount of time, that uh, I mean That'll the fact that it lasted right. 25 years, I'm not sure how much longer concrete's going to actually last anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know on the concrete either. So, when will the will the work be done before um, the boating season starts, or will it be done at the end of the season? Uh, I believe we have um, planned out with the city engineer to be in the fall. In the fall, right? Okay. Right. And what we can do is just cordoned off with some temporary fencing their boats into the corner of the parking lot since it's not so busy so they can still launch and you still have the full season to boat while we do that and it won't be more than like a week and a half project okay. total so it's quick great any other questions great um, okay can I get a motion to approve the, the revised fiscal year 13 CIP cost estimate for resurfacing the boat storage compound to a total amount of $70,000 and to revise the fiscal year 13 CIP document currently under consideration by City Council. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Motion passed. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, next, our Townline Community Park Playground um, planning schedule. Um, Chuck Myers is going to go over um, what the timeline looks like. Thank you, Chairman Ford and members of the board. Uh, as you recall, we were. Uh, we had the drainage project last fall. We were able to uh, finish that up, the drill and fill portion of it, uh, thanks to the extended fall, uh, which it looks like we had nothing to worry about. So <laughs> we were able to finish that up uh, around Thanksgiving, and we did the swale work also. It's not quite done. It needs to be seeded. Uh, we're waiting for that to settle out, but we're very happy with where that's at. Uh, we did get some rain during the process when a part of it was done with the drill and fill and it looked good. It looked like we were seeing a lot of improvement. It's uh, too early to jump to uh, total success, but it looks really good at this point. Uh, we'll see in the spring as uh, we get the heavier rains. So uh, we're moving on to the uh, plans for Townline, the, the uh, playground. 
We have done a little bit of uh, work on putting a proposal together. Uh, we're going to, in January, we're going to be uh, finalizing plans with staff uh, and we want to have a public meeting uh, on February 29th. So we'll be preparing for that uh, and getting ideas from the community on uh, what we present and uh, the playground that is on the uh, screen right now is the one we're looking at. Uh, there may be uh, some alternatives shown at the meeting, but this is uh, basically the idea we're uh, it's a draft. It's just a draft concept a draft at this concept. point. Yeah. Yeah. Is this so, the same group we used at Waveland? It is. Okay. And this would be uh, also through the consortium. Uh, and so we wouldn't have to go out to bid or anything. It's a government uh, consortium. Uh, and this would be, again, working with new toys on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we would be coming back to you uh, for uh, the final uh, proposal uh, in March. And then in April, we would like to get this uh, with your approval, get this before city council uh, for their approval. Uh, and then order the playground equipment after that and begin the process of building it in July. Uh, that seems to work out the best uh, with our schedule, with park and forestry activities. Uh, it shouldn't be that disruptive to other play out there. It's in a, an area that we think we can uh, work out and won't bother anyone. So uh, we plan on about four weeks to get that done. Is this something that we will install as well? We'll order the um, equipment and then we'll install it like we did at Waveland? Correct. Okay. We're planning on uh, installing it with our staff. We're experts now. Yeah. I know. It should we be should easy. hire ourselves out. Um, any other questions about the timeline? Could, could I just mention yeah. a couple of things? Um, just a reminder on this, this is a um, being funded by what was remaining monies from the uh, initial referendum for acquisition of the park and development needs of the park. So this isn't coming out of the park and public land fund. This is money that if, if it's not spent on a, on a purpose at town line at the end of April, that money goes away. So this is an opportunity for us to take advantage of something without having impact to other um, you know needs uh, in our system and then the other aspect to it though is it does still require City Council's approval of this as a project concept which will go before them on January 17th as part of our overall capital they saw the initial list in November but the more uh, final decision on capital projects is on January 17th so uh, you know the park board uh, if you know you're supportive of it then on the 17th it will stay in there as an item in their packet for their consideration obviously at the end of the day we'll have to come back to park board and council with all the financial aspects of it and get actual approval of the total of the expenditure of funds but right now we're just trying to get the concept back on the table for discussion with the community and with city council so okay. great thank you very much Jeff thank you. Um, Tonight, our spotlight is on the Lake Forest Fitness Center, and our fitness manager, Jason Busdecker, is here to present. Thank you, Chairman Ford and members of the board for allowing me to take a couple minutes to speak about the fitness center. Um, <coughs> my name is Jason Busdecker, and I've been a fitness manager here for the city. This will be going on my second year. Um, Kim Yessian is still the program supervisor at the fitness center. She's been in her position between eight and nine years. Uh, she's currently on vacation, so she's <coughs> unable to join us this evening. So, um, Before we go ahead and jump into my presentation, I have placed a coffee mug in front of each and one of you, so as a little gift from the Fitness Center. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. So with the Fitness Center, obviously the, your traditional um, ideas of what, you're, what you consider with the Fitness Center with the weights and the cardio equipment and the treadmills and so forth and so on. Um, you can go to me. Where's my, there we go. And my control. Um, with personal training group exercise, we also do run the tennis program as well as the court sports, uh, squash, racquetball, and volleyball for the, for the rec center. And we also do provide uh, child care for the fitness center members while they're using classes and or the fitness center itself. Currently we have 1,319 members 
um, that is a, a slight decrease from my presentation last year and from my calculations it's a, approximately about a 3% decrease from last year at this point. Um, the fitness center itself uh, carries over 30 pieces of cardio equipment with treadmills, bikes, ellipticals, and steppers. Uh, we are in the beginning stages of our equipment re replacement program. Um, we have <coughs> ordered some new recumbent bikes, which actually should be, from according to the vendor, possibly delivered um, as soon as next week. So we are in beginning stages of that. Um, we also have over 30 pieces of strength equipment with uh, selectorized machines, cable systems, free weights and dumbbells. Um, we do provide personal training for youth, adults, um, buddy training, meaning two clients with, uh, with one trainer, and um, also obviously individual training as well. The fitness center is, is staffed during all operation hours with a floor supervisor as well as someone at the, um, at the desk. So we do have someone available for members and guests if they have any questions throughout their, throughout their workout, if a proper use of a machine or questions on where certain equipment is at and you know, anything that they happen to have questions are. Um, there are staff available at all times. So, um, Group fitness classes, uh, we currently do <coughs> offer over 40 classes per week, ranging from strength classes to some dance classes to um, yoga classes to you know, weight training classes, so a little bit of everything for try to as com encompass as many people as we possibly can. Um, the schedule does, base, does vary slightly based on the season and obviously participation. We will remove and add classes as we see fit according to participation. Um, classes are open to members, residents, and non-residents. So you do not have to be a member of the fitness center to participate in um, group exercise classes. And sign up can be done on a daily drop-in fee, so a one-time as you pay as you go type of, um, type of program um, through punch cards and also registration process. A couple things to highlight with the group exercise classes, a couple things that are new starting here in uh, winter of 2012, the mind-body fusion and the 360 fitness class. There are two classes that we have started um, just recently with the new year. So there's a couple of new additions on the schedule currently. And uh, beach classes will obviously be coming back this, this summer. Uh, we have, we'll be having TRX on the beach, um, which the TRX is this side um, class. You see in the picture there on the mm -hmm. side. And we also have a boot camp on the beach class, as well as yoga on the beach. So people can look um, for, up for those classes coming up in the summer brochure. Um, we, something we did different, a little bit different last year was kayaking fitness classes. We did run one kayaking fitness class. I think we had three or four participants and it actually went over very well. Um, we had a, kind of went up and down the, the lake shore of, you know, right off the Lake Forest Beach and the people had Great, um, great times, and it was fun just to kind of go around, and everybody was kind of learning as we went, and I think uh, kind of learned, and everybody realized it wasn't as intimidating as they may have thought. So it actually went over very well. Um, with the tennis program, we still are working with College Park Athletic Club. We've actually just finished up our second full year um, working with College Park, and we've had great success. We do run a, a year-round program, indoor and outdoor programs. The indoor programs are run and held at College Park Athletic Club East location, which is off of 22 and 294. And the outdoor programs um, use our parks tennis courts for the summer programs. And oh, we do offer most of our classes do incorporate youth, but we do have adult classes that are offered and running as well. We've had great success working with College Park Athletic Club um, in the last Two years, uh, participation has increased 44% and uh, revenue has increased 32%. Since so we've, it's, we've had great success and the numbers kind of speak for themselves and you know, have had very, very few comments in the other direction. So we're, we're definitely moving in the right direction with the, with the program. So. Um, court sports, like I said, was, was squash and racquetball and some volleyball. We do offer uh, squash programs, youth and adult programs, and currently we do rent the squash courts um, a few hours each week to the Lake Forest Academy for their um, high school program to, to use as practice courts and even as a couple of, couple of on occasions um, for match play. So they do use our courts as well. Racquetball leagues, uh, we do have currently approximately 20 players in our racquetball league. 
mostly when, uh, men, but we do have one or two women that do participate as well. Those do typically run seasonally, so we should be getting our um, winter league up and running in the next two to three weeks. And then volleyball is available. Um, we know typically in the winter time we've had a, a handful of uh, city employees that come over and um, use, utilize their lunch hour and play a little game of volleyball and some friendly competition amongst staff. So. And lastly, our January membership promotion. Um, currently, our promotion is zero enrollment free. And with all new annual memberships, each, each of those new members will receive a 13th month for free. So we're actually giving them an additional month for, after paying for 12, we're giving them a 13th month for free. Um, in addition to that, we'll receive one hour of personal training, two free guest passes to bring in a family member or a friend, and an opportunity to buy three one-hour personal training sessions at only $99. So it is a discount, and that, that promotion runs through the end of this current month. So, any questions? Any questions for Jason? Jason, you want to mention your card that's going out, the postcard? Oh, yes. Um, thank you. Uh, we did develop and have designed a um, postcard. Uh, it's 5 by 11 um, inch postcard that is in the mail currently. So mo most of you will probably end up getting that if you haven't gotten it already. That should have started going out on Saturday <coughs> promoting this um, promotion. We had approximately 10,000 um, pieces mailed to the community in the surrounding area. So, I I'm just wondering. Um, I, I've been a long time member of the fitness center. I've noticed that over maybe a long time, uh, maybe the last four or five years, you know, there seem to be fewer people in the fitness center. And, and I know that the, there's a beautiful facility that was opened up over at uh, um, Lake Forest College. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering, what, what is the long-term trend and, and what do you think the impact of, the, of that facility has you know, had on our you know, participation rates? I think the college has had has definitely had some impact on our membership. Um, it's it's a brand new facility that typically does is very attractive to many people for a variety of reasons. Um, I think there's a lot of other increased competition, such as the college, the hospital's facility. There are several small uh, private yoga, Pilates, personal training studios mm -hmm. that are not just within um, Lake Forest, but Highwood, Lake Bluff that are relatively close. So I think just being in a small, uh, smaller area and the increased competition I think is spreading, is spreading out the, the pool of participants and members for everybody. So you're definitely seeing a, uh, a long-term decline then? Right? Sure, yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. Are there other things that you're thinking of doing to decrease that decline? Over? Um, currently, the last we have been sending out um, extra reminders, if you want okay. to call them that, for people that have not renewed. Um, the last couple of months, this will be our third month going through with December, the people that have not renewed, we're actually calling personally to offer them a reminder, um, asking them if there's anything that we can do with helping them become, you know, re renewing their membership if it's um, offering them a payment plan or other, you know, reduced membership options, mm -hmm. a six month or a, free, a three month membership versus an annual. Mm -hmm. um, and I did get some information in the ones we called in November, we actually were able to recover 15 memberships in November and I, another eight from October that did not renew initially that we reached out to and that we did end up getting a renewal from. So. I think at the last time you presented, one of the issues was having more evening and weekend classes, mm -hmm. for especially for the working people, which I think is one of the reasons maybe they go to the college and maybe they go to the Health and Fitness Institute because of the, the later hours and mm -hmm. some of the things. Is that something you're still thinking about or might possibly do? Are you hearing that as one of the comments from some of the people who aren't re rejoining? Yeah, we did. Um a lot, unfortunately, the people, a lot, some of the people we're reaching out to were leaving voicemails and we're not, we're not hearing back from all of them. Mm -hmm. um, we have had tried to start some adding some additional classes. We do have a new class, um, Step Up Your Fitness, on Tuesday evenings at mm -hmm. 6.30, which is a new class. We also have another yo uh, yoga class 
from 6 to 7 on Thursday nights. We've added a teen yoga class on, at 4 to 5 p.m. on Thursday nights to help to attract some of the, um, the kids straight, coming straight over from, mm -hmm. from Deer Path Middle School. Um, so we have had tried to start various classes. Great. The ones we have tried, you know, we haven't seen as great a participation yet, mm -hmm. but we're still trying to throw different ideas and different formats. And the new class we started on Monday night, we brought in a new instructor to kind of hope, you know, kind of see if that would mm -hmm. help spur some, some new interest along. So great. You also added the studio, converted the one room to a new studio. Do you want yes. to mention that? Yeah, we took um, court, what was court one, the squash court. Mm -hmm. um, and converted that into a fitness slash dance studio. Um, and that happened in August in between our summer programs and our fall programs. And that has definitely helped our ability to offer additional classes because of the, you know, the dance program and as being as, as large and successful as it is, you know, help unfortunately was, wasn't able to allow us a lot of space in the evening. Right. So this has been able to open up space for both of our programs and that's been helpful for us and to be, at least to be able to offer them and hopefully try to generate some interest. Great. So. Great. Any other questions or comments? I just, I just say it's, it's, a, it's definitely a tough environment out mm -hmm. there and I wonder on some level what obligation you know we have to really compete you know aggressively. I, I, I don't want to, um, I'm sure that because I'm new I don't know the, some of the answers to the questions that some of these guys probably already do know but I presume that we're pricing um, to recover our variable costs. Mm -hmm. We have a, a fixed cost, obviously, like any of these facilities. And uh, if we're pricing to recover, that feels right to me. If the, uh, I, I, you know, I, uh, I think if the, if the particip participation rates are down <coughs> in a way that you think is, you know, somewhat reasonable, um, given, the, you know, that there's a whole new facility in town, that's okay. If we feel like somehow the participation rates, um, you know, aren't where they need to be, given we have a 20,000, uh, you know, 20,000 population here in town and obviously people coming in from out of town uh, as well, uh, you know, then, uh, then maybe we ought to uh, think, you know, about how we can compete harder. But I just don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if we should be higher than where we are or whether it's a reasonable place for us to be. Well, we do, we do look at the market <coughs> comparison. We set the fees earlier this year, and I, that was before um, you were on the board, Steve. We kind of shared some of those and where we are pricing-wise. It's not always apples to apples. That's part of the challenge. Like the college, they have a nice draw because they have the pool, and so does the Lake Forest Hospital facility. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different beast. If you, apples to oranges, you yeah. You know, if you want to do that kind of thing. Um, I do think the youth market is one that we really want to pursue, not mm -hmm. that we have a growing youth population so much, but... We know obesity, we know that healthy <coughs> activities for kids is very important, and we've got kids right outside our doorstep really bringing them in. I know that, I don't know if the, we finalized the thoughts, but trying to do something at the end of the year for the school, for the kids who graduate going into high school, kind of a gift kind of thing to get them to mm -hmm. come over and start using the facility. So we, they, they have been brainstorming the staff on that, that perspective. Um, and then I think the other aspect of it is just trying to do some additional marketing, which you know, like this this big postcard that's going out. Mm -hmm. They have a newsletter now that goes out every month with tips from the fitness center as well as reminders about the fitness center things, and that goes out to our full database. So we're trying to ramp that up as well um, to the extent that we, we've got the resources to do that. Yeah, but it is, a, it is a tough market. The economy is, you know, we're seeing that impact still. You know, yeah. hopefully it's going to make that turn, and we are seeing that, but not, you know, it's hard to get back to the numbers we were at a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So. We did add, um, last spring, we did add a student membership for um, 14 to 23 year olds that if, instead, if they're, it's still more beneficial for them to be part of their family or you know, with a parent as a membership, but if the child or the student was just was the only one coming to the fitness center, we developed a rate specifically mm -hmm. for students that it was not as expensive as a uh, full individual adult membership. Mm -hmm. And that's actually gone over very well. And as of December, we had 44 student memberships Great. that who knows, we may not have had if we mm. didn't have that opportunity for them. So mm. I know your winter break membership for college kids when they come home mm. is really good. I think yeah. we've all used my all my older kids have used that. So that's yeah. been a really great and, this, and we do see the same ones usually typically come back for the summer as well. Mm. Good. Yeah, that's the three month summer membership yep. is um, is very popular also. 
Great. Okay. Good. Well, thank you so much. All right. I really appreciate you. it. Thanks. Hey, the director's report. Um, just a few things this evening. The first, I'd like to start with mentioning the fact that um, the city is going to be hosting a public workshop on January 30th at 6:30 at the Gordon Community Center on our um, bicycle master plan. Uh, it's really the first kickoff public meeting to look at um, and talk about all those kinds of options and things that we'll be investigating and developing over the next course of the year um, in order to have a master plan, hopefully to look at it from connecting our, our existing bike paths, safer biking corridors on our, our streets, as well as opportunities to connect sections of the community where paths don't necessarily connect right now. Not anything we may be able to do right away, but it's to get in place a plan for opportunities. So if grants come open or if we're redoing a road in a specific part of town, we can take all those kinds of things into consideration, as well as you know how um, our current bike paths are serving our community, as well as those who come here and enjoy our bike paths. So that's going to be um, on January 30th. And the Community Development Department, Megan O'Neill, is coordinating that on behalf of the city. Uh, Megan did her master's in. Um, bike master planning so it seemed like a perfect fit for her Chuck on uh, our department is participating from the recreation side of it um, at the meeting as well so I'd like to invite you as well as the whole community on that um, they we did do a bike uh, survey that was on the city's website and Megan was telling me today that we had close to 500 residents who participated in that so that was really a nice feedback um, document and they're summarizing that so they can help use that information at um, at this public workshop as well. So it's the beginning, just the beginning process here, but um, a great way to start engaging the community on this, this green topic. So I wanted to share that with you all. And that'll be um, the invites going out in the dialogue. It'll be on the website, and then they have an interested mailing list as well that we'll be receiving postcards about it too. And we'll have some flyers up in all the city facilities about that. Um, the second item I have is just uh, this weekend is uh, on the 21st of January from 2 to 4 p.m. is our open house for the Kinder Haven Preschool Academy. Um, I'm proud to say that our preschool last year was filled um, to capacity and as far as we are aware we were the only preschool with full capacity um, in the community. So we're very proud of that. Um, really has an outstanding curriculum which um, where that reputation is being built um, throughout the community and we've got a very active parent board that's really helping uh, make sure the quality of the school is excellent and that we do a lot of things with the very young children of our community that grows them you know comprehensively so that that Academy to come meet our teachers see our space learn about the curriculum and everything is on the 21st from 2 to 4 and that's right at the Kinder Haven facility at the rec center there on Hastings um, the third item I have is just to mention that the Golf Advisory Committee has started their work together. You met Rick here earlier this evening, but we do have nine residents um, from the community who are participating in that. We had a committee of the whole meeting in December to kind of kick things off, and at that meeting, the group decided to divide into three subcommittees. Um, one is on marketing, the second one is benchmarking and goal setting for the course, and the third subcommittee is programs and events. So uh, they've all been uh, meeting, we started meetings last last week and through this week for the subcommittees um, so we could really kind of delve in depth to these topics and put together um, some of the things that we want to either get additional information pulled together on or want to begin to brainstorm etc as Rick reminded me it's 60 days to opening of the golf season so it'll be here before we know it but lots of lots of good energy a tremendous group to work with very impressed with the people that we have um, had to participate so far um, you know, Jeff and I have been uh, very busy with, uh, you know, responding and getting information together for the group, but really can't say enough um, about where I feel this is headed and it's, it's the right direction for the golf course. A lot of fun things, I think, will come our way. If you go to the golf course now, it looks like we've got all kinds of uh, bombs going off in there. We've stripped the entire clubhouse down to the studs. Um, we're going to revamp that, paint that, refresh it, do some new displays, new merchandise, as Rick mentioned. So when the season opens in the spring, we'll have a fresh, I think, a lot of fresh uh, new ideas and things happening there. And the Program and Events Committee um, has met, and the marketing has met. The last group to meet, which is Thursday, is our group going to start the benchmarking discussions. So. When, is, when is opening day? 
Well, it's usually around March 15th, so oh, okay. we'll, it is a little bit weather dependent, but yeah. Um, the tea time, permanent tea time lottery will be shortly thereafter, um, that same, I think around the 17th or something of March. The membership sales uh, letter went out in the mail, uh, we out in the mail tomorrow. So you'll, all of our members will receive that and we'll also be sending that out and putting that information on our website and et cetera so we can start the 2012 season membership sales as well. Great. So, so good movement with that. And then um, the last thing I just wanted to mention to you is the Forest Park Project Board has been continuing with their work. Um, they've made tremendous progress. I know you heard earlier this fall some updates from their subcommittee reports. They have been trying to um, find some alignment amongst all their groups on some of the design elements of the park. Um, we actually had Stephen Stinson, who was the architect for the conceptual plan in on January 5th, this past Thursday, and we went down to the lakefront and we chalked um, in uh, the recommendation, which is to keep the ring road, a potential, you know, where that would be in relationship to pedestrian paths so we could validate the location in the park and the look in the park and kind of get a good sense of that. So it was a good working exercise. A, a large number of residents joined us at that workshop. Um, so, you know, we uh, felt like we did get a little bit of information out on that, but it really, again, was more of an opportunity for the architect and city staff to really see it in the field and know what we wanted to shift or what was working or not working so he could finish a design that we could come back to the park board and the historic preservation. Uh, and that really is the next step. Um, they are trying to refine the full uh, conceptual plan so that they can bring it back to the park board um, as well as historic preservation commission to give feedback on um, this refined master plan so that uh, hopefully the um, uh, community can see that there's been a lot of meeting of you know different views and opinions it has it has more from what it was proposed a year ago may um, you know to what it is now i think that we've tried to find a middle of the middle ground to really um, accomplish something with this park that can move this park forward uh, so it will be a beautiful park that you know really has everything updated um, in there so that we can protect that you know that's a really special park down there i think um the something that resonated with me at uh, when we were walking with Stephen this last week as he said this is a such a special place we have to take you know I don't mind taking the time to make sure we get it right and that's really what the group has been doing and um, so I think you'll be very pleased to see the changes and the revisions that will come back before you um, I think the community <laughs> overall um, can get excited about this it's not a massive change it's just a refinement and enhancement of what we have down there so I think you'll enjoy it um, right now the the original thought was it would possibly come to the park board at your February 14th meeting um, in discussion with the Forest Park Project Board they're going to probably need a little more time than that so um, it'll probably come later in the month but we're trying to finish um, that date make sure that they can have the material so it may require moving our February Park Board meeting to a different date and I'll get that out to all of you and see if that will work with your schedules once I have a little bit more direction from um, the Forest Park Project Board on that but um, again good progress on it. I'm glad to see all the work and um, it's it's been uh, it's it's been evolving so it's been good to keep it moving um, and then the uh, you know the I guess the last thing um, that I can share with you is it's been an unusual winter. I think you all know that. Um, we may have ice this weekend. We're hopeful that we could get some cold temperatures. We might get a little bit of skating in at West Park. Um, the interesting challenge has been for us, normally we do a lot of tree kind of work and stuff during the winter, but the ground hasn't been as frozen as hard to allow us to get into some of the areas. But with the cold temperatures coming back, we do anticipate doing some of the final tree removals around the lakefront from the storm damage this summer. But again, we're, we need a hard surface in order to do minimal impacts to the bluff and things like that. So you might see our crews out and about uh, trying to get caught up with all of that. Um, so we'll see. But uh, it's been great other than that, the weather-wise. I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed being out and enjoying even the parks more this winter than I have maybe in the past. So, And that's it for, for my report tonight. Great. Thanks, Mary. Um, any comments by board members? Okay, um, since there's no one in the audience that hasn't already spoken, unless Sally or Trisha would like to speak, <laughs> you know, um, if not, um, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? 
So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. Meetings adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>